Dr. Castleberry here, uh, taking questions from our Creating Social Media Presence and Cultural Movement students. Uh, we are looking at the Scott Goodson book, Uprising, uh, for short or uh, for long, uh, the long title, Uprising, How to Build a Brand and Change the World by Sparking Cultural Movements. Uh, we also have a book that we'll talk about when we tackle some of these student questions, uh, interviewing for journalists, all right? So um, our communication degree overlaps between a lot of areas that we want to meet. And we're sort of always looking at media studies uh, and communication, but we're also interested in public relations and the broader uh, avenues of public relations marketing advertising and of course a, a class like this uh, and others brand management yeah and social media trends social media being that that other tier but um so as an all-encompassing uh mass mass communication uh major we we want to tackle issues relating to journalism i think we talk about ethics and many of those subjects in a digital media literacy as well as the media law and ethics courses uh, and this is this book uh emily potter's book gives us a chance to um read straight from the source but also it's very straightforward it's it's a it you you should be finding this a very breezy read i there is so much practical information here but all at the same time i want you all to recognize every time you're reading about it or or, or the author's writing about journalism uh, we can extend that okay journalism is it's is a, a you know a field and a profession and and a, and a kind of professional discipline but um, these skills you know, translate and we can use those in whatever job situations we're in. I'm looking at some questions from Liz and want to just move through a couple more uh, as we're in our lightning round mode, allegedly, in uh, week, as we're getting close to the end of week two here. Liz asks, how... I'm sorry, <laughs> looking at the, oh, uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna back up. The Interviewing for Journalists book, let's explore it. Liz asks, what is an example of a fail, quote unquote, when interviewing someone from page six of the uh, Emily Potter? And I would, I would say a closed ended question, all right? That's a fail on our part because what we're doing is we're limiting the conversation. We're limiting the opportunity to gain knowledge. We're setting them up for an easy out instead of a potential explanation that could explode uh, in any exciting direction. So a closed, uh, closed ended question would be one. Another fail might be to insult the interviewee. Uh, we can insult people through maybe our tone of voice, uh, through maybe a lack of respect, or maybe pushing them too far, or perhaps, you know, uh, going off script, maybe in a way that's not organic, right? So blindsiding an interviewee if, if you have some sort of kind of uh, under un, pre prearranged understanding of of the content to be covered in an interview setting, um, so um, an, an example might be to pry unnecessarily or disrespectfully of an to uh, you know with, with regards to pulling information out of an interviewee. Let's remember we're not attorneys here. You know this is we're not on a this is not a uh, a trial. Uh, an interview. An interview is an opportunity to open communications. And, and I think sometimes mass media entertainment um, and probably cable news uh, gives us a false impression of, of what these settings and situations should look like. Because what we're wanting is to open channels of communication. Like that's what we're doing as communicators. We're trying to open channels of communication so that we can then be gatekeepers and share that communication with others. And you know, often you see these portrayals of dramatic situations where someone there's a there's a showdown of words or a kind of gotcha moment right i'm going to entrap them and i'm going to gain a, a a revelation through my interview and really the majority of our interviews aren't don't don't have that context and we, we probably have no you know business trying to be that person uh without f further training Asking a question out of chapter two, is it often that interviewers lose their temper during an interview? I would say, no, nope, no way, 
not uh, common in the least bit. And when it happens on television, it tends to be more uh, of, of theatrics, okay? And do we know what I mean by that, right? Uh, just remember television, uh, TV news is a production, all right? So their goal is to keep the audience listening, right? To And tuned in. Um, and that's why you never get any kind of conversation fully settled. They actually borrow from soap opera technique in that way. And that they're always giving you the cliffhanger. Oh, it's the end of the segment. Thank you for coming. We'll be sure to come back next time. And by the way, you know, we, we often in other classes have had these rich discussions about news and cable news specifically and this polarization of of political ideologies in the u.s specifically and uh one of the one of the items that both students and i, I see it all the time on social media just you know your your friends your neighbors your family your whoever people love to point out how biased news media is and of course uh different organizations have different biases in in certain ways i mean they have biases in that they are powerful entities okay and that they set the topics for discussion comp 2113 we talk about agenda setting theory or at least introduce that theory to talk about in the communication context but more than that uh, guess what folks uh, let me let me let me pull the curtain back a little bit more you let's take uh, a quote unquote not my terms liberal cable news outlet and notice how they have quote unquote conservative guest pundits on uh, a, an evening program. Well, if you watch long enough, you'll see that conservative voice returning to that program or others again and again and again. And, uh, and, and for those sort of kind of slowly putting the pieces together, they are on retainer. All right. So they're getting paid to come on and, and, and share a certain perspective, right? In, in the kind of the court of television in the in the in the in the on the stage before a mass media audience and um they're they're compensated quite well as a matter of fact and i believe there this was there were some documents released only a few months ago of former maybe campaign staffers and and people in high places of political power uh, we're talking employed with for the federal government within the last you know a year or two years, and they were getting, you know, nearly six figures as their part-time job coming on television to talk about those opinions. So uh, I think sometimes it's so easy to get swept up in these, in the narrative, the narratization of news that we forget uh, that cable news is is a business more, more than ever. Uh, good questions about movements, but I, I wanna be fair and balanced wink and move on to some of our other student questions. Rosalind uh, ha has several questions this week. I'll try to get to a couple of them. Looking at the author Lee Potter uh, interviewing for journalists talks about, quote, learning to spot what Cole Morton calls a killer quote when you hear it, end quote, from page 31. My question is, would you provide us with a few examples of some killer quotes that you're familiar with so that I will have an idea of what I'm listening for? And I don't have any of those <laughs> prepared, right? Killer quotes, whatever those are. I, let me pause and say, here, here's an aside. When I was growing up, friends and I, we love movies, we're talking about movies or talking about media and that kind of thing. We'd have these different conversations at school all the time. I was always the worst person at playing the movie quotes game, okay? Uh, and so I would butcher uh, the direct quotations from from various films while certain friends had 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 a deliberate kind of intellect that could recite dialogue perfectly every time. That was not me. Um, but 
But growing up, you know, continuing to study media, I realized where my, where the true talents were. You know, I had an eye for visual detail. I was, I, it was easier for me to acquire the sound, the score, right? The, the tone, the mood, and, and all these other components, right? Dialogue seemed to be the last thing that, that I would actually hold on to and uh, kind of like music lyrics. And I'm uh, saying the same today. So I didn't prepare any of those, but um, in response to Rosla, I'd say, it all depends, okay, this learning to spot a, a killer quote when you hear, it depends on context and goals. What's the goal, what, what is the goal of the piece? What is the goal of the interviewee uh, or, or interviewer? Um, you know, what, what is the context with which this conversation is taking place? What is, what is, what's the, who is the audience? Who's the reader? Okay, who are the people listening or watching the program or reading the periodical? And and so understanding the information flowing toward them, what is going to entice that audience? Okay, and so it depends on what you're after. Uh, and it's also about developing an ear for valuable information. That's a, that's a process. That's a journey, right? Just like just like this whole communication thing, right? What is media studies? Uh, how do you do public relations? It's this is a, a journey, and we take it one 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 you know little component at a time, uh, and then we do these pauses. We're sometimes looking back. We're sometimes looking forward. Okay, we're looking at the mi micro and the macro. Uh, Considering all social media mediums that can be used to spread news so rapidly, what do you consider as key to being quicker than our social media user counterparts buying for the same hot topics of interest? Uh, in other words, how do we stand out in the crowd, quote unquote, with the competition of social media mediums being used to get the information in place of us so quickly? I believe I understand. Roslyn is is talking about how do we how can we be a sustainable voice in journalism if there are all these platforms now available and if everyone allegedly has their voice and if people can beat us to the punch and yes the response is it's harder than ever to sustain a career as a journalist it is uh this is why you see the uh, journalists becoming very dexterous they're becoming jack of all trades that's the new expected norm, okay? And that's, that is yet another reason, thus a great question, why we, we point our curriculum and our readings and, and some of our assignments and our discussions in so many directions. We're wanting you to gain that broader perspective for the, the directionality that we can use, but also, you know, the opportunities, the options. And that's yet another reason in this course why every week we're bringing in a guest speaker from a different profession uh, and potentially, uh, you know, different types of degrees from places. But we're going to locate the, the, the synergy between them, right? That's part of our goal. Uh, so you have to be unique. You, you have to have unique and original ideas, rather. You, you need to be creative. And you don't have to be, note, note my words, you don't have to be a creative person to, to tap into creativity, okay? You can, you, you can be, there are you know, naturally creative people just like there are introverts versus extroverts, right? Um, you, we can hone these skills. And that's why we have assignments to try to teach us to work through that. Also, remember the medium. What medium are we using versus other people? If they, social media is all about impressions and impression management. A lot of people are putting out there. It doesn't necessarily mean they might be have a better story than you. It's all about timing, too. Timing is everything. Uh, scholarly work takes a lot longer, but it's about being more accurate than ever. Just like investigative journalism is supposed to take a lot longer because accuracy is important. Uh, and so it could also, um, good luck and good fortune are other factors as well, okay? And that, that puts us into the end of segment two. Whoops, here we go. Uh, we'll, we will uh, record some additional content and get to more student questions.